a long process cleaning this whole head up here but it's coming along we're getting a little better and better I'm using brake brake cleaner a scrub pad um, scotch bright pad and a rag to kind of clean up the surface a little bit better um, there is a little bit of lint and stuff getting into some of the passages but I'm gonna clean the whole thing up with uh, brake cleaner at the end but as you can see here I've been able to clean up this pistons valves where the valves are going in this one the um, air intake which is the bigger ones is a lot cleaner than the exhaust which I guess makes sense because once you're exhausting you're gonna have more carbon in there um, but I'd say they're pretty good my one concern I guess with the exhaust is there's quite a bit of pitting around the the actual valve seat I'm hoping when I relap the valve with the valve lapping paste that it will get rid of most of that pitting and it'll clean it right up I have used the brush a little bit as well and the odd time I'm very carefully scraping with either a razor blade or a screwdriver to get the thicker stuff off but I don't scrape too far or too hard just to make sure I don't scratch anything so we're really lucky to have a couple diesel mechanics on call. We have Alex's brother who's been very helpful with different uh, suggestions. And we also have our friend Graham from Port Colborne where we bought our boat originally. So I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to get off these pretty thick carbon deposits on the intake valves. And um, yeah, I haven't really, I knew if I tried to just sand it like with like scotch bright or something it would take forever and it might not really come off very well so he suggested uh, Alex's brother suggested using a butter knife because I mean it's got rounded edges and it's gonna be very difficult to scratch it I'm still being careful just because but it's working pretty good look at some of these big chunks that I've gotten off and we're also soaking them in diesel to help uh, break loose some of the the carbon. So I'm going to use this to scrape off some of the really thick stuff and then it's going to be to either this scotch bright or the, the finer scotch bright that we have to clean them up. And then maybe some really high grit sandpaper like 2000 ish sandpaper uh, to polish them up. And I saw online people put the, the valves in the chuck of the drill and spin the valves with the drill and just hold the scotch bright pad over it and clean them all up. So that's the plan. But right on where the valve actually seats, there's big clumps of carbon. So that seat is actually, I mean, you can see where it, where it ends here, where my fingernail is. And the carbon is actually over the seat. So that's why these valves weren't sitting in their holes properly. And the, uh, the air was escaping in underneath the valve, even though the spring was compressing it down into the valve seat. The carbon was stopping it from actually seating correctly. Ooh la la, look at those pretty valves. All right, I got the head all cleaned up. Now I'm just using some brake cleaner to get rid of any of the debris inside the valve guides and just cleaning up the, the head a little bit more before I lap the valves. The um, two intake valves are pretty shiny and they don't look too bad so it won't take too long. I don't know if you can see this but there's some decent pitting on the valve here on the exhaust valves, both the exhaust valves, but this one's the worst. So we're going to try to lap it with the valve and the grind compound and see if we can get that cleaned up nice. So I got the first valve, it goes in this first hole here. We're going to dip it in a little bit of oil. I don't have an oil squirt gun thing, so we're just going to let it drip down the side here. Basically we're just lubricating the valve stem a little bit so that it doesn't wear out too much. Spread it out a little. We're going to insert it into the valve guide a little bit, perfect. Then we're going to take a little bit of this valve grinding compound. So we just want it on the edge of the valve where it's going to be going into the thing. We don't want to get any on the stem because then it'll grind out the valve um, guide. So what we're going to do is we're going to push this valve in all the way, wiggle it in there, push it against the valve, 
we're against the seat and then we're going to use our little drill here normally you would have uh, the su suction cut holder that would hold the bottom of the valve but our valves have a little groove in them here so it makes it a little easier to do what we need to do Now we're going to remove the valve again and wipe down the valve seat, get rid of any extra compound and the valve. And take a look at it and see if it's better. The valve is a lot nicer on where it actually seats against the valve seat and the valve seat is a lot better but we still need to clean it up a little bit more because there is still some pitting but it looks a lot nicer than it did now i want to do a leak down test so i need to put the springs in to see if they're actually seating correctly i've got one spring in i just want to show you guys how i did it because it worked out pretty easily and sometimes these springs are a little bit hard to get the keepers back on so i've got the spring for each valve all organized making sure that i put everything back together the same way that it came out I've got the spring here all oiled up i'm oiling up all the components the little cap oiled probably don't really need it but I feel like it's gonna slide better then we just put the keepers you make sure they, they kind of are a cone shape so you just make sure the smaller section is at the bottom so you just put the keepers in like that and then I've got my patented little socket tool here just a regular socket with some paper towel shoved into it and this is gonna help keep the paper towel is gonna help keep the keepers from jumping around when I go to push down this spring. So you put the little socket on top. I'm using wood to help compress it. And then you compress it as far as you can. And it looks like it didn't get both of them, so I'm gonna do it again. So sometimes they're a little bit stubborn to get in these keepers. They don't like to be friendly sometimes. On the last one they got a little bit stuck so I'm going to show you. Basically you just keep going at it until it goes on. Because sometimes it won't go on the first time and the keepers will get kind of jammed. I just want to show you the my makeshift tool that I showed you before that I was using with the clap. Uh, it sort of worked, but I found a much easier way to get the keepers back onto the valve stem. So you just use something like this, drill a hole and make enough of a hole so the keepers can fit in between. And then you set the keepers on the top and you just put this like that and you push down until one of the keepers is on. There we go. And then push down again. Oh. And I can push the other keeper in. All right, all the valve springs are in, and now we are doing a leak down test. So I got some diesel sitting in the valve seats, and we're gonna see if it starts to leak down. If these valve seats become empty, then we know it's still not seating right, and I'm gonna have to relap it. I did a leak down test on all of these yesterday, and it seems like the first three so this one this one and this one are still leaking these two are leaking a little worse this one's holding all of the diesel fuel so we're just going to i'm going to re remove all these three springs and relap them to make them seal a little nicer and then these are our two valves that i still need to relap our two intake valves here are fine but our two sorry our two exhaust valves are fine, but our intake needs to be redone. Okay, okay, we are changing our stem valve gaskets. So taking off all the springs once again. The, the valve seals. That's, 
stem valve caskets. I don't know what kind of name you just made up. No, that's what it was called in the papers. Oh, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Not that crazy. So you remove the valve. We've already showed you how to remove the spring. Then you just take a screwdriver and without bending, breaking the actual, uh, you don't want to go too far in. How did you do this? I'm a professional at that. <laughs> so you don't want to go too far in. You don't want to just, just get the gasket itself. Want me to show you? There we go. And there it comes. In pieces. <laughs> then all you do is oil up the new one and pop it back on. And then you can put everything back together. So now we're just oiling up all the components. Our brand new seal, you can see the hole is a little bit smaller than the old hole, so it should have a tighter seal. Then you just put it on and push it down. Try to put the paint in the same direction. Oh, was I supposed to line the paint on the last one? No, I don't think it matters. 